Well, uh, some of you may think that uh, I look Dutch, but uh, I'm actually Brazilian, more specifically from Sao Paulo. It's one of the biggest cities in the world, and uh, yeah, it's just high rises until the eye can see. Um, just so you have an idea of the scale of Sao Paulo, uh, here's a map of the Netherlands overlaid on top of it. Uh, Sao Paulo is that gray bit in the middle there, and uh, yeah, in that gray bit, there's 20 million people. So that's more than the entire Netherlands. And with this huge urban density, there comes a big problem, traffic. Traffic in the morning, lots of it. In a normal working day, we, we expect 50 kilometers of traffic inside the city. At night, the same. And if it rains, yeah, well, then the entire city stops. And during holiday seasons, uh, we can get up to 300 kilometers of traffic. So if, if I wanted to go uh, sailing, <laughs> thanks for mentioning that, um, I would, a normal drive would be two and a half hours into, into the, the, the ocean. And sometimes I took 12 hours to get there. And for, for me, that was a bit of an annoying thing. And well, <laughs> I then uh, moved to the Netherlands to study. Um, and I was greeted with the scenery, a beautiful, nice infrastructure, bikes, um, gr yeah, great train system. I know a lot of you complain about it, but it's really perfect. You don't know how lucky you are. Uh, and then I, uh, I decided to study at the Technical University of Delft because it is one of the best engineering schools uh, in Europe. And the main reason why I wanted to study there was this uh, building. It's called the Dream Hall. And here is the headquarters of student teams uh, who are building these crazy machines. There's a team building a rocket, a uh, hydrogen-powered car, uh, maybe you know the uh, Nuna Solar Challenge team that uh, races across Australia, the Hyperloop. And this hall, this building was really inspiring me, uh, for me because I wanted to develop something that would help solve this traffic issue in Brazil, or at least understand it. And so I asked around what was necessary to, to create a student team. And uh, uh, the answer was a competition a lot of uh, motivation and patience. So I said, where is this competition? I want it now, where is it? And luckily, uh, we found one, and it's called GoFly. It's sponsored by Boeing. And the challenge is to innovate in personal air mobility. Um, this competition had a set of rules. We had to build a, a flying device which is smaller than 2.56 meters uh, in any direction, so diagonal and width as well, and height. I uh, had to carry a 91 kilogram payload, that's yeah, the average human, and had to be quiet as well. That was an important aspect for them. It was 87 decibels, which is as, as loud as a lawnmower next to you, which is still pretty loud, but for flying things, that's, that's perfect. And it had to be capable of vertical takeoff and landing. So we said, OK, we're going to do this. Let's, let's go. And so we created a project. We needed a mission for it. And we said, OK, for us students and researchers, it's important to be a platform for students to get hands-on experience with engineering, management, finance, marketing, and doing presentations like these. It was, that was a core value for us. And also, we wanted to innovate in the field of urban air mobility, and of course, have a lot of fun and get to know more people. And so we had to come up with a name, and we came up with Talaria. Talaria are the sandals of the Greek messenger god Hermes, which has the, with the little wings. And without these sandals, he can either fly or isn't fast. So we thought that was a good name for a personal flying device. The next step was to kind of go into designs and trade-offs and see what does the future of personal air mobility look like. And you might, some of you might remember Inspector Gadget. Um, that was an a, a, a idea for us. And in April 2018, with no engineering experience on how to build a helicopter, a group of students came up with this. It was a combustion uh, helicopter. We thought, this is not good enough. We are better than this. We know that the future is electric, so we should make an electric helicopter. And so we changed our project mission to uh, be a platform for students to get hands-on experience, innovate in the field of urban air mobility, and build the world's smallest electric helicopter capable of carrying one person. And uh, so we went on, and in April 2019, uh, we managed to come up with a design. And we didn't do this alone. We did it together with partners. NLR is the Dutch Aerospace Center. 
And uh, together with them, we developed uh, a technology they helped us uh, with engineering and also uh, with regulations, an important fact for, uh, for this uh, upcoming industry. We also innovated in the field of uh, uh, 3D printing. We're actually the first helicopter in the world, so Bell hasn't done it, Boeing hasn't done it, Airbus hasn't done it, using uh, additive manufacturing, so 3D printing in titanium, uh, a, critical, a mission critical part for the helicopter. And also one of the reasons why we're here is Cognizant. Uh, we've partnered together with them to develop the flight software of the device so that our device is semi-autonomous, so you don't need to be able to have a pilot license or you don't need to pilot it. You just set in where you want to go and it flies you there. Oh, nice. Our device is here, so you can actually come see it at the Cognizant booth. So what's next for us? Well, testing, of course, a lot of it. We are participating in, a, in this challenge, and the fly-off will happen in February of 2020 in the United States. Um, so we're testing a lot to make sure that we are pitch perfect for that. And we also have new challenges ahead of us. We are looking into the future and how this technology we're developing can be used in the in future of aviation and electrifying aviation. And uh, so we know that what we're building now is not the solution for Sao Paulo's traffic. It's possibly a solution. But we know that this is the first stepping stone to understanding what it takes to engineer that solution. And for us students and researchers, that's a very key uh, step. Uh, we also have long-term developments for the device itself. We're developing a, a platform so that it is uh, modular, so that we can uh, entertain very diff various different modes of transport. Is it to carry people, is it to carry packages, is it to carry specific mission-critical payloads for firefighters or ambulance services. And uh, next to that, we're also thinking what the future holds in this new field of aviation, of urban air mobility, and how we need more research into air traffic management, uh, uh, further development of autonomous flight software, and also to test run these full-scale business models and, uh, and to figure out how we can implement these devices in the, uh, in the society today in a way that, is, that people are not annoyed by flying devices. Um, and my call to action in this presentation is to kind of ask for some help in uh, business development. We're curious to know what your company might uh, see in potential in this kind of uh, industry and this kind of technology. Um, also, to partner with some of you in trial, of, uh, trial runs with our uh, helicopter. And I also uh, call out to make sure that you look out for urban air mobility in your business and how that might affect the way you position your company headquarters somewhere, where, where, how far your in, uh, uh, industry or uh, your uh, factories are from your headquarters. Because that might seem a bit silly to think about now, but it is really affecting how uh, transport will, will be done in the, in the uh, mid-range distances. And also look out for how drone technology uh, can help in your businesses. Uh, there's a lot of potential for data gathering is in oil and gas industries, but also in warehouses. These drones can, are capable of flying in these super small spaces and collect a lot of data and very quickly. And I, I encourage you to think how you can improve your business with drone technology and urban air mobility technology. Thank you very much. Well done.